Hi, it's Paul from Wicked Acorn. So you're at a party. Somebody finds out you can play guitar. The host brings out the ghost of Christmas past. It hasn't seen the light of day since 1972. It's always out of tune, often missing a string, but always, always without a pick or a plectrum as some call it. Now you've probably seen videos about what that funny little pocket in your jeans is for and most of them will tell you that it used to be used for a pocket watch back in the day. But that's not the real reason for it and it actually has a name that I'm sure you've heard before. It's called a pickpocket. So I can work around the missing string and the tuning's not a problem but this is one of those times when I don't have a pick in my pocket. Nobody wants to listen to your finger-picking Moonlight Sonata. They just want to hear a strumming cowboy chord sing-along. So what do you do about a pick? Well, if you're Brian May, you just whip out a coin, because that's what he uses anyway. But that's not for me. Especially when I know there's a better solution. Now, back in the day, this wasn't that big a deal. Well, that is if you lived in North America. Everybody had the solution to this problem in their kitchen. There's at least one of these, sometimes a whole drawer full out there. They're called bread tags, or for the wishfully pedantic, oklupanids. Oklu meaning clothes, and pan meaning bread, to use some pseudo-taxonomic nomenclature. They're the things we use to keep bread bags closed in North America. Some say they're the best things since sliced bread. There are hundreds of videos on YouTube with ingenious uses for these ubiquitous little dealies. But the absolute best secondary use for a bread tag is they make great guitar picks in a pinch. But they stopped using them in the UK sometime in the early 2000s. They adopted this stupid little bit of cello tape. You can't find the end of it, it tears the bag, and it's unresealable. When I first moved here to Manchester, I just assumed it was to cut down on single-use plastics. And rightly so, if that was the reason. It seems they were a problem when ingested. There are several cases of people accidentally swallowing bread clips. One was an elderly woman suffering from Alzheimer's with a blind husband who prepared her meals. There's not much more info about individual cases, but you can see how that could have gone wrong. The bread tag does exactly what it was designed to do, to your intestines. It gets clipped on and doesn't let go. It doesn't degrade inside the body and doesn't show up in x-ray. The British Medical Journal has identified over 20 cases of accidental ingestion of plastic bag clips, resulting in several deaths. The oclupanid, or bread clip, was invented by Floyd G. Paxton. In 1952, he was flying home and realized he had no way to reclose his bag of peanuts. He rummaged through his wallet and found an expired credit card and carved his first bag clip with a small pen knife. Remember when you could carry peanuts on a plane? Plastic was just starting to enter homes after the war, and a fruit packer wanted to replace rubber bands with a better bag closure for his new plastic bags. Paxton remembered his bag of peanuts. He whittled another clip from a small sheet of plexiglass, and the bread clip was born. Paxton designed a die-cut machine to produce the clips at high speed. However, despite repeated attempts, Paxton never won a patent for his clips. As a result, there are many different designs, or should I say subspecies, as a tongue-in-cheek website puts it. The Holotypic Oclupanid Research Group, a database of synthetic taxonomy. It's gone into such detail describing the different genetic variations in bread tags that it's mentioned in the British Medical Journal. The use of the Oclupanid naming system in all future reports of the discovery of this class of objects in gastrointestinal tract will help determine if certain orders present a higher health risk than others, so that even if this bag-closing device cannot be completely eliminated, perhaps at least the most dangerous forms could be taken off the market. They've also been mentioned in the New Zealand and Australian medical journals, where they've been having some success with replacing the plastic bread tag with a recyclable, biodegradable version. Without the go-to bread tag to use as a guitar pick, what could I do? Well, I've made things from old plastic bottles before. I bet it would work for a guitar pick. I have my pick of picks in here, all different colors and gauges. I'd never thought of it before because I usually have a pick. If I didn't, there was the bread tag. 
and we certainly didn't have the amount and variety of plastic we have now. I couldn't believe it, but there's actually a device you can get to punch out your own guitar picks. So I now have a new favorite guitar pick. And in a way, these guitar picks really do save lives. They exist because the bread tag doesn't. And it's the second bit of the recycling triangle, reuse. Discovering it could only happen to me here in Manchester. If I was anywhere else, I'd have a bread tag. Necessity is the mother of invention. They're actually really good. They're free, and unfortunately, I have a never-ending supply. Now all I need is a song that won't get me a copyright claim. All right, tuning. <laughs> 